Happy Sunday. Happy Resurrection Day, people loved by God. We want to thank you for joining with us in our virtual worship this morning. And thank you for being with us. Please do let us know that you're joining us this morning. You can click like on YouTube or on Facebook or however you're watching us this morning. Or please let us know by, by saying a quick word of hello in the comments below. We're so happy to have you with us. And may your hearts be blessed. As we begin our worship this morning and gather our hearts, I'm going to be reading this morning a prayer printed in the book of worship that says it was taken from a church wall somewhere in Mexico. Let us pray together. Give us, Señor, a little sun, a little happiness and some work. Give us a heart to comfort those in pain. Give us the ability to be good, strong, wise, and free, so that we may be as generous with others as we are with ourselves. Finally, Senor, let us all live as your own one family. Amen. There's a future that runs through my veins. 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 There's a future
open our ears. Make us receptive to hear what you would say to us today. Change us and mold us into the image of your Son and lead us to life. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, and I'll be reading from chapter 1, verses 14 through 20 from the NRSV version of the Bible. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men And followed him. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, the good news of Jesus Christ is on the move in Mark's gospel. We've been watching it move together over these past few weeks, and my hope is that we are studying its movement. Mark says at the outset of this gospel, as I've reminded us every week, that he wants to tell us about the beginning of the good news. And in beginning in that way, he is attuning our ears and our hearts to see that these events that he's telling us about are a movement of the good news and that these other things that he's telling us about are also a movement of the good news. He wants to show us if we are patient enough to look closely, that the gospel has made a powerful start in this world in these events that he's telling us about. A start that we, too, are called to carry along forward. We could, in fact, carry this investigation through a a study of the entire length of this gospel because 
In fact, the whole gospel is a telling of how the good news has gotten on the move. But Mark 1 is uniquely important in some ways because right at the beginning of this gospel, we see this movement cropping up here and there in ways that we might not have thought to notice as the gospel making progress before. It may never have occurred to us before to think of baptism as good news on the move. It might not have occurred to us to think of repentance and aligning our lives with the kingdom of God as a movement of the gospel. But what we can witness, even thus far in the part of Mark 1 that we've covered so far, that, that the waves of the gospel are, are rippling outward. And it takes on all kinds of different forms. And it takes on these forms because the gospel that we've been asked to train our eyes upon here is not just a neatly packaged message, but God's embodied in transforming life for the world. And today, as we continue further along in this chapter, we read about Jesus calling his disciples. Follow me, he tells them, and I will make you fish for people. Somehow, some way, the calling of these disciples, too, is a piece of the movement of the good news. Here it's just Simon and Andrew, James and John, only the first four of many disciples that would follow. But we're, what we're being asked to consider, I believe, is is how this good news gets on the move, not just sacramentally and not just through the changing of our lives, but also, also through our relationships. How might our relationships, the bonds that we form intentionally with other people, become channels through which the gospel moves out into this world? That's what I want to look at today with you. How might our friendships become channels through which the good news gets on the move? Some friendships are harder than others. Some friendships are more intentional than others. I want to tell you a couple of stories about a, a couple of friends of mine that have showed me quite powerfully what it looks like for, for friendship to be a channel of the gospel in the world. I'm going to call them friend one and friend two because I'm sure they'd rather not have me use their names, but, but friend one got a call on the phone one day from a person who had just been a loose acquaintance of theirs up until that moment. The person on the phone was in a lot of trouble. It was legal trouble and it was relationship trouble. It was also financial trouble, all wrapped up into one, and it was big trouble. They were facing the kind of thing that, that marks the dividing line between a before and an after in a person's life. And the way things that were looking in this situation, the after was looking really, really bleak. It was not a call that friend one was expecting to receive. They were just casual acquaintances, after all. That this call came meant that there was no one else left. This was a friendship that took shape not in the discovery of some common interest or shared hobbies or pursuits, but simply and only because friend one understood that friendship can be a channel of God's restoring grace. The person who he was speaking to on the, on the other end of the phone at this moment of time honestly did not know if they were willing to walk forward into the wreckage of their life. But friend one said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk on the phone at least twice a day. You're going to call me when the darkness is getting to be too much to handle. We're gonna meet in person. I'm gonna show up and walk with you through every step of the trial. 
and help you sort out the financial problems. This was a person who was broken and friend one was catching the pieces before they all hit the ground. The book of Isaiah says, a bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick you will not snuff out. Friend one was fulfilling that promise on God's behalf. Those were promises that friend one kept over the course of several years and today, today that person's life is on a totally different footing. With a family and a new purchase on life and a calling to share the gospel, friend one showed him what it means, what it looks like to go and fish for people. Friend two has been a saint in my life and in the lives of many other people. And I don't call them a saint because they're perfect or have performed miracles or anything like that, but because their life has been a beacon of the holy for many a person and has spurred many a person toward a closer resemblance of Christ. To know this person is good news because friend two won't let you slip. Friend two will not let you stray and leaves no room for confusion about where you stand in their heart. I imagine that friend two has probably made a few phone calls in her lifetime that people on the other end might have been a little worried to receive. But that's how she carries her people. And if they were down in the dirt when she got hold of them, they'd be dusted off and on two feet by the time she was done. She is intentional about her friendships. She knows what these friendships really are, and she understands their, their power and their capacity. And so she's baptized her friendships in a covenant of care. And because of that, her friendships are good news for you, a ripple of the gospel still on the move in the world. These friends and the ways that they live out friendship in the world with the kind of mission and purpose attached to them, with a different level of understanding of what friendship is for and what friendship can be, have shown me why relationships have to be, have to be a part of the movement of God's good news. Taking people under our wing of friendship like Jesus takes on new disciples has to be part of the spread of the gospel because the transforming power of God is love and love is the stuff of relationships to reach the kingdom's goal we're going to we're going to need partners on the way we don't we can't do it alone we need people like friend one to pick us up and show us the way when we're down and when we're broken. People need us to understand our friendship covenants to them through God's eyes if our friendship is going to be a means of God's grace. We need people like friend two in this world to declare the existence of a church out of thin air out of sheer force of their God-given conviction that God has gifted us people to look after. The gospel is on the move through these friends. They are the ambassadors of love who carve out spaces where transformation can happen in this world because of their commitment because of their patience, because of their love and their encouragement, we can find our way again when the visibility is low. We all need those people. We need to be those people for one another. We need to be those people for the world. Because the kind of commitment that Jesus 
makes to his disciples, follow me and I'll transform you. Follow me and I'll take you from being a simple fisherman to being a fisher of people. That kind of love and care for one another is the gospel on the move. And so friends, I want to ask you, who are you caring for today? For whom is your friendship good news? There are bound to be some, but maybe we could all do a little bit more to consider a bit more closely the power of this thing called friendship to be an instrument of God's transforming work in the world. We could all afford to think long and hard about the fact that when the ball was getting rolling and the good news was gathering steam back there at its beginnings, that Jesus formed these friendships, these relationships with intention, that they would be transforming. Well, the ex with the expectation that they would reverberate further into the world. So pick up your phones today. Make a priority of these friendships today. Ask yourself, what can you do to enter into your relationships in a way that looks more like the way Jesus did? Friends, our love is to be an extension of God's love. So love with purpose. Love with intention. Love in a way that makes a splash for the kingdom. And all of God's people said, Amen.
Good morning and welcome to our children's moment where we invite our kids to tune in and our adults to take on a childlike presence. I've got a question for you this morning. Do you know what this is? If you guessed whipped cream, you would be correct. What are all the foods that you can eat whipped cream on? There's pie and milkshakes, hot chocolate, French toast. I'm sure you've named a bunch of other foods that are fantastic to have whipped cream on or with. And one of the things that I've noticed about adding whipped cream to certain foods is that it makes awesome food taste even more awesome. For example, sometimes I see pumpkin pie, maybe it's at the holidays or just for fun, uh, with no whipped cream on it, and I think, mmm. No, I'm pretty full. I can hold off. But as soon as you add whipped cream, give me the whole pie, you know? What do you think? Are there certain foods that you would want to eat even more because it has whipped cream on it? Thank you for thinking about that with me. And remember what we talked about because we're going to bring it up again in just a little bit. But in today's scripture, we hear that Jesus sees Peter, Andrew, James, and John fishing. Now they were fishing because it was their job. That's what they did to help their family. Then Jesus invites them to stop working and follow him and start following him as his disciples. And the story says that Peter, Andrew, James, and John immediately laid down their nets and followed Jesus. They didn't even have to think about it. They just did it. In case you were wondering why they were so quick to follow Jesus, I think our story about whipped cream can help us here. In the same way that whipped cream helps someone like me remember how much I love pumpkin pie, Jesus also helps people like Peter, Andrew, James, and John remember how much they like God. Jesus was really good at helping people see God's awesomeness. Jesus was also really good at teaching his disciples, like Peter, Andrew, James, and John, how to better receive God's awesomeness and how to receive God's love and light and healing. And just as the disciples learned to receive God's awesomeness, then they also learned how to share God's awesomeness with others which helped those people remember God's awesomeness. The same thing is still true for us today. As we learn from Jesus through Bible stories, how we can better receive God's light and love and healing, then we are also learning how to better share God's light and love and healing. And when we share God's light, love, and healing, then we are helping others see and know God's awesomeness just like Jesus did. And that's the good news for today. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus, who shares your awesomeness with others. Please help us to receive your awesome love so that we can share it with others, just like Jesus did. Thank you and amen. As we come now to lift up our prayers for the people this morning, I want to remind you that you can send us your prayer requests both through our Mumsy app as well as through our church website on the prayer tab there, and that'll make sure that gets to me and uh, so we can lift it up in our Sunday morning service. Let us be together now in a spirit of prayer. 
Redeemer, faithful friend. We pray today as we hear today's message that you would spread your good news into this world through us, through the ways that we care for one another. Lord, we are reminded today of the importance and the power of love in the world and through our lives. We are reminded today of the way you take hold in hearts through actual hands and through actual feet walking beside, Lord, from people being willing to hold the shattered pieces of a person's life through hardship, Lord, through, through our helping hands. Lord, it is through you that we come to learn what it is to be a true and a faithful friend. Lord, and this is a world that is desperately need, desperately in need of true and faithful friends. Lord, make us not only true friends for one another, but true friends for this world. Teach us, O oh Lord, how to give one another the space that every human being needs to grow. Teach us how to be patient. Teach us how to be nurturing. Teach us how to be wise. Teach us that wisdom, Lord, that, that knows how to never let another person go, but to hold them in your love, to hold them in the light of your holiness that calls us all forward towards growth. Lord, in that spirit, we lift up the prayers of our world this morning, the world that so desperately needs friends like you. Lord, we lift up those in our country who are still working through difficult times this morning. As always, Lord, we lift up those who have a front seat in your heart, for those who are suffering and for those who are mourning for those who find themselves on the margins, O oh Lord. We also lift up our country this morning. Lord, we lift up our leaders especially as they help us move forward through the difficult times that we face. We pray for their wisdom. We pray that they might find a spirit of cooperation and humility to be able to work together because, O oh Lord, we all desperately desire to move ahead. Lord, we pray for the safety of, of our children and of our teachers, of our nurses and our hospital workers. Oh Lord, we pray for we pray for your strength. We pray for your grace. We pray for your wisdom to reign. Lord, we also lift up the prayers of our church community this morning, and we name especially the Blair family, Kathy and Jean, the Roby family, Frank, Elizabeth, Virginia, Sandra, Debbie, Dennis, Paul, Lorraine, Gabriella, family of Scott K. and of Donovan. We pray also for Arthur as well as for Maureen and the Jowders family. Lord, you know the prayers of our hearts this morning. You see them and you hold them and we entrust them to you. We pray in the way that your son has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Friends, our friendship can be a powerful means of grace in the world. It can be the movement and the rippling of the gospel. And so go out, take hold of the world through your relationships. And may the love of God and the grace of his Son, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of God's Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you this day and forevermore. Amen.